Cool. So, on Saturday, Harry, you said you were looking forward to getting uh, free training sessions with the boys this week. So, how's that gone? Yeah, very well. Um, positive. Worked hard. Uh, again, we get a chance to install things and things are coming together gradually. They've not been there yet. Uh, we've got better, I felt, each game. I felt Saturday we actually played better than probably the other two we won before. Um, our transitions were better. So we're getting there gradually and today, you know, it's nice to see it come together a little more. And how much does the impact does it have to have the three sessions not have a game in between as well? It helps uh, uh, fatigue-wise, you know, fitness-wise. Um, just sort of the intensity we demand in sessions is as good as playing a match, but it's more regular. So, you know, they'll get, they'll get fitter from it. Um, and it just helps us work on different bits and we find a lot of just troubleshooting as we go along and little, well, if this happens, what are we going to do? And there's stuff you can't do as quickly as two, three sessions. It takes a couple of weeks, really. And on Saturday, you said you were looking to work on transitions this week. Uh, first of all, is that what we've done? The second of all, it's quite a new term. Can you just explain what that is as well? Um, yeah, I think the game the game's about transition. So the game's, you know, on regains and, you know, if you're defending and you regain the ball, your first pass is crucial. Um, your movement from your players outside of it is crucial. What they're going to do, where they're going to go, um, and it's it's massive for us. I felt we defended so well the first two games, um, and we kind of, you know. But then once we got it, that first pass or that first idea wasn't necessarily there. On Saturday, I thought you could see evidently with the chances we created later on that, that those ideas were there. But that was after one session, and we try and install those ideas more and more. You, um, you become a product of your environment and if you can cre create in that educational environment and that intense professional environment in the end it will become, become natural to them and it's getting there. And, uh, moving on to the ins and outs, we've seen a few more outs this week, I suppose the most notable one is probably Jamal Loza, good opportunity for all the guys I suppose to go out and get some minutes. Yeah, yeah, it's good to get, get some minutes, um, you know, they're, they're, some of them are good players, you know, they've got good chances, it's just you have to fit a system and define sort of what we are and have an identity. Um, and if you just play off the cuff every week and we don't have an identity, we're going to be in trouble. And um, Certain players are working with it, some aren't, and it's all about having the right people, right characters, and obviously just bringing in sort of what you know to go and do the certain jobs you want to do. So, you know, Jamal's a good player, he'll go there, we'll sure he'll do well, and we've got callbacks in there and we keep tabs on him. And um, it means he's playing whilst we also are, so he's keeping his fitness up, and if we call him back, he's ready to go. And incoming, we've had uh, two players. First of all, we uh, welcomed Josh in earlier this week. I think, I suppose we'd say a, a reserve goalkeeper maybe was the highest on the priority list, but uh, he looks like someone who's got a great future. That, that's, that's for the reason. Um, uh, I'll say on record now, Josh will play in the Football League one day. Uh, he's only just turned 18, he's a young lad. Um, loads of ability, loads of potential. He'll play here uh, Tuesday night in the Cup, um, so there'll be a chance for people to see him there. But is you know turned down scholarships to go and play to play men's football at 16 17 and it looks like it is he's more of a man than a boy um, and he's he's got a brilliant brilliant future and then today we've welcomed him gold uh, from Berry what sort of player is he uh, we well, can see by the size of him um, he's a he's a big boy he's a handful um, will help with what we're trying to do and style and help other people get up the pitch and you know give certain people a break he's a uh, He's a brilliant professional, he's a lovely lad, which is really important, one of the most important. Um, and you know, he'll, uh, he's desperate to be a player in the league. He's played in the league this season eight times. Um, we've had some good reports from certain managers. You know, he started and played a game against Lincoln in the league this season and done well. Um, we know how good Lincoln are and how organised they are. And he's a handful and he'll cause problems and he'll be another asset to the identity that we're trying to install. And there's been an awful lot of ins and outs over the last few weeks. Do you feel like we're more or less there now in terms of what you want? Yeah, I think we're getting there. Yeah, I think we. Um, it was a bit like a pre-season again for me. And the problem is I didn't want it to become a pre-season where it's dragged over five, six, seven weeks and it's constant new people, constant people leaving. That's why I bought five in the same week and tried to install it quickly so then they're settled. And those players are all settled now. So when the odd one comes in now, it's not like it's constant big changes. It's just dripping someone in gradually and... Um, I think we're nearly there, but then we've got loads of work to do on the pitch as we do, and the lads are getting better and better, but at the same time there's always room for improvement. Over the last week I've seen a lot of stuff on Twitter, not about Maystone, just generally generally about Man United, about sort of philosophy and culture and things like that. I feel like that's something that really has changed here over the last few weeks, would you agree with that assessment? Yeah, um, structure and philosophy are different. Um, you have to, firstly, you have to install a structure, that's a, a very basic style of play very basic defensive um, positioning. Um, we install that first and just do the basics really well. 
um, be a good team first and foremost. Philosophy takes a little bit longer um, to install you know, your patterns and what you need to do. Um, and we've gradually started to do that, but that takes six, seven, eight weeks and um, structure is something you can almost implement instantly through demand. Um, it's not an opinion, it's not, it's not like they do it how they want to do it, they do it how we tell them to do it. Um, it's a demand and it's a uh, sort of we adjust it to each week. That's the other thing, you can have a philosophy, but if a team comes here and they play totally different, you have to adapt. And I think we've so far we've managed to be adaptable. Um, you know, we've seen in games so far, we've switched things and changed plays at halfway through and it seemed to work for the better. That's a credit to ourselves, the staff, the players to identify problems and adapt. Um, and then on the ball, we, as I said, we get better. Philosophy is more part of the attacking wise. Um, and it's, it's getting there um, very gradually. So looking ahead to, to, uh, to tomorrow, last week we were missing Oli Mulder and Seth Tomasi. How are they looking uh, for tomorrow? Yeah, both fit. Yeah, they're both fit, which is good. Um, it's a fully fit squad, to be fair. It's the first time since we've been here. Um, fully fit, fully available squad. So we'll pick what we can. Um, you know, and we'll, we'll go from there. And just, uh, it's nice to have those lads back. They're good characters. They're good. They're part of this. Um, and everyone out there is a really good, you know, really good uh, man. And that's massively important for how much you see they give you on the pitch. They're honest players, and they'll give you everything. And there's a few uh, selection headaches for you now. Yeah, nice though. I like that. Um, what you don't want to happen is when you, you know, you, you're in trouble in the game, or not necessarily in trouble, but you need a change, and you look on the bench, and you know, you think, what can I, what can I bring on? Um, I'm not saying that's happened here, but it's nice to have selection problems where, you know, well, you can go and do a job. You're probably unlucky to start, but you come on now and make a difference. And then it becomes competitive. Suddenly, people that are on the bench are trying to compete for places. We've nearly got two in every position now, which was the aim. Um, and, you know, suddenly then the levels go up because everyone's competing with each other and it only makes people better. So we know you're interested in love to do your research before each game. Uh, so what have you sort of taken away from what you've looked at for Bromley? Uh, a lot, we, we know a lot. Um, I'm sure they'll do theirs as well. Um, all we can try and do, you know, every team has weaknesses, every team has strengths, including us, including everyone in the league. All we can try and do is expose theirs um, and be solid on our strengths. And, you know, that's the whole point of research is what, where can we get at teams? What are they good at? How can we, how can we prevent that? What are we good at? How can we um, highlight that and uh, extend it further? Um, so we've, we've learned a lot about them this week. Uh, we learned a lot about them last week at the end on Saturday evening when the other game finished. Um, but they'll come here ready to fight. They're a good team on their day and it's not going to be an easy one. And I suppose it's our first uh, Kent Derby, I think, of the season. So you must be looking forward to that element as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it'd be nice. Yeah, I mean, the game's a game to me. <laughs> I damn everything down. I don't really... It's 90 minutes, 11 v 11, 16 v 16. I really want to dress it up. Um, and yeah, whoever we're playing, we've just got to... We've just got to go out there and give it our everything. And as I said to the fans before, we can promise you that from the first interview, we'll give you everything. And I don't think yet we've let you down. And lastly, I thought the place here was bouncing uh, last week. Uh, it seemed like all the sports are really buying into what you're trying to do. So you must be looking forward to seeing more of that tomorrow. Yeah, I thought, uh, the atmosphere here is brilliant. Um, I came from a club where they were well supported and it was quite good. This is another level. Um, the atmosphere is brilliant. Um, obviously, they're two and a half thousand, wherever they're going. You know, they're fantastic. Um, but we've got to... We've just got to, you know, keep giving them something to go on. And I, I was hoping they'd have a good crowd there because I felt the lads over the three ga the two games coming into that one deserved to have a crowd behind them for all the wins they'd got. Um, and they gave them that, so you know it's repaid the favour. All we've got to do is keep doing that for them to make sure they've still got something to sing about, and this place becomes a fortress. You know, we want it to be a hard place to come where some, this is our home, and you know, and the players are our family. And when you walk in, no one messages with your family in your own house, and that's how the mentality's got to be for 90 minutes.